Hey guys, so this is gonna be a different type of video that I've ever posted on my channel, my main channel before, as you guys can probably tell from the title. This is a more serious topic. So there's a lot of um, like shit happening in the world right now. At first, I was <laughs> really disturbed by the Brock Turner case. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a Stanford swimmer who sexually assaulted a girl and she made public her letter. The argument is kind of just that he did this really, really, really creepy thing. He sexually assaulted this girl when she was unconscious behind a dumpster and his argument is that he was just really drunk and he thinks that he can kind of make it all right by just doing some alcohol awareness where the real argument is that he sexually assaulted this girl. It doesn't matter if he's drunk. It's never okay to do that. I've read about that for the first time like two weeks ago and then the Christina Grimmie incident and then the mass shooting in Orlando. Usually my channel is a place where I like to be super upbeat and positive, but to be honest there is a lot of like bad stuff in the world. So I decided to make this video just so that if one person watches it and it can help one person then it'll be a thousand percent worth it to me. When I first kind of um, read the Brock Turner case, I like didn't even think about it or connect it to my own life until I read the victim is the older sister and her sister was there and her sister places a lot of blame on herself. This happened and she kind of took it as her own fault. And I have a sister, Callie, and I really resonated with her sister because if this happened to my sister, I would totally be in the same position. But yeah, so this happened a really long time ago, and it's not something that I think really affects me today, but as I sat down to film this video, I was like kind of nervous. Usually by the time I like start talking to the camera a little bit, it's like, it's all good, but it's still like a little bit, <laughs> But I kind of wrote down a little bit of an outline that I want to make sure I cover, just because this is like a really sensitive topic, and I just want to be like as transparent and clear as possible. Um, with all of the points that I want to make. Okay, so there are a lot of like important messages, but basically I'll just give a brief like backstory of my story and how I was sexually assaulted. Um, and it wasn't just me, it was also my sister. This is really hard to tell on camera. Okay, um, I honestly don't remember a lot from this time period of my life because I was really young. I think I brought it up with my sister like years later, uh, I think sometime when we were in high school or something, so we've talked about it, but it's not like a common conversation that we've had in our household at all. But I distinctly remember like basically the entire thing that happened. So I was probably like four or five and our cousins were over. And these cousins at the time, they're a lot older than us. I think I'm just gonna say like seven years older than us. So me and Callie are 16 months apart, so I was probably four or five, I don't really know, it could be a little bit older. My parents were gone for some reason and the deal was that like our aunt was babysitting us with her kids. So there, she was like house sitting slash babysitting. So I think we had built a fort or something in our living room area and we all decided to just kind of sleep there. Not sure if it was our idea or their idea or what but we decided to sleep there. So I was sleeping on a couch and then my sister was on the same couch and I think I was asleep. And all of a sudden I kind of feel someone touching my legs, like they're kind of nearing my thighs. And I just remember I woke up from this and I just pretended to be asleep. Like I was kind of just in shock as a five-year-old and I wasn't gonna say, anything but I knew that I felt really uncomfortable with what was happening I knew this wasn't something that was supposed to be happening my parents did a really good job when I was growing up teaching me to be very cautious of the world outside and of like creepy people and at a very early age <laughs> so I knew this was something that like wasn't supposed to be going on there were two cousins 
both boys at least seven years older than us and I think the older one of the two was touching my thighs and he kind of goes up my legs until he gets to you know like my private areas I don't know how like PG I want to keep this I don't I don't think this is a PG topic anyway so I don't know so he you know he's very slow and I don't really know what he's trying to do out of this or what his end goal was but he's very very slow and careful I think maybe he's like not trying to wake me up but I'm definitely awake and I just remember that he did end up um, going past my underwear and touching me like in the vagina <laughs> That's like, I don't really know how else to say it. So he um, was definitely in an area that he wasn't supposed to be, and he did touch me. And Callie was also awake. I think I talked to her like years, years after, and she said that um, our other cousin, the younger one, didn't end up actually like touching her, but he was on his way there. She gets up and she wakes me up and she's like, Amory, I think we should go sleep upstairs. And so we go upstairs in my room and sleep there for the rest of the night and we're like completely safe there. They don't follow us or anything. Like we spent the rest of the night sleeping together in my bedroom upstairs. And that's pretty much the end of the story. But the thing that was so weird to me that I think about now, I just remember that when we did end up telling our parents about this situation. Callie brought it up. She started telling them what happened. I was a five-year-old. I had no life experience to know that this was like a super uncomfortable topic to talk about, but I just remember that I was really uncomfortable and I kind of just like uncomfortably laughed and like, you know, hid my face really shy like. I feel extremely safe around my parents. Like they've always encouraged me to be really open and honest with them or just, you know, protect me in any sort of way. Like they're amazing parents in that way. But I just, I wouldn't have told them and I don't even know why. First of all, if Callie wasn't there, like when it was happening, like I have no idea how far it would have gone or like what my cousin's motives were or what would have happened that night or anything like that. I have no idea. And then if Callie hadn't told my parents, I can probably say with like 100% confidence that I don't think that I would have told them. If that says something about this topic or just like discomfort or just sexual assault or even rape in general is that um, it's not like a comfortable thing to talk about, but it should be talked about, which is why I'm making this video to kind of come out and talk about the topic so that it's not such a not talked about thing. Like, in order for people to be comfortable talking about it, I think that people need to know that it's okay to talk about it and tell someone if this is something that has happened to you or has happened to you or is happening to you, you know? You can tell someone. Now I'm gonna go into like the things that I think I'm gonna probably get questions on or the topics that I like wanted to derive from this topic. I think that it didn't really have extremely long-term effects on me. I don't like think about this a lot. Clearly like it was a scarring event in my life because I still remember it so much longer and I will never forget it. But something that it did do to me is that it made me super cautious of avoiding uncomfortable situations. I feel like everyone kind of has gotten themselves into a situation, like whether it be like a party or with a person or just anything like that where they're just kind of uncomfortable. I will either leave or speak up and I am very assertive about it and I have no problem hurting anyone's feelings. Just having this situation happen to me and if it ever happened again, if it's like under my control, if it's under my power to avoid these situations, I'm definitely gonna do it because it would just be stupid of me to not. I'm definitely not saying that like, oh, I avoid these situations and victims are always at fault because that's definitely not the case. There are situations where the victim can't leave. Um, in the case of like Brock Turner, his victim learned about this in the aftermath of it happening because she was so intoxicated that she didn't remember any of this happening. I have no problem leaving a situation like that, but I really don't think that a lot of girls can say the same. You just never know like what kind of state or emotional state you'll be in. A lot of girls in these situations kind of just freeze up 
or, you know, think that they're the bad person. Just this year, I've heard of so many accounts of sexual assault and even rape, but the descriptions of these stories are kind of told like in a joking way. I think a lot of it has to contribute to just the environment that my school USC like Greek life has. An example of this that I've heard is like a mid-tier sorority girl is like kind of with a, a guy in a top house. To me these have like I don't give a shit about sorority and fraternity rankings because they are based off of purely materialistic just really stupid arbitrary things that shouldn't matter when you're judging a person. People's characters and their accomplishments and their you know their niceness should be the most important factors, but she thinks that since this guy is paying attention to her or, you know, talking to her that she that she should feel lucky in some way that he's giving her attention or that, that he even wants to, you know, talk to her or hook up with her, that she should be, um, like, flattered. To me, this makes absolutely no sense at all in my head, so I don't relate to this whatsoever. Like, this makes me... Like, I get heated whenever I talk about it, but, like, this is a mindset for some girls. Like, for a lot of girls, like, at USC, I think this is a huge problem. And so, if he wants to hook up and she is by her status lower than him, he has the authority to do what he wants. And she doesn't want to ruin her reputation or ruin her sorority's reputation, so she kind of just lets it happen. Then, when she tells the story, she tells it as a kind of humorous thing, which... It is so backwards to me. It takes away from the seriousness of what sexual assault is and what rape is. These are both very real things that happen and have a huge impact. If you don't take it seriously, it's not only doing an injustice to yourself as a victim, but to other people and other girls as well. And to the person who did it. If you're letting a guy do this, and there is no consequence, then he thinks it's okay. Basically what I wanted to say with that story is that this is a lot, a lot more common than I think people think it is. The advice that I want to give girls who are either going through something like this now or who might have to deal with this in the future is to be aware of these things and know that they are things that happen, especially like on college campuses. Be aware, take it seriously, speak up, if something like this is happening to you, don't be scared to speak up. Leave the situation if you're ever feeling uncomfortable. And another thing is do your friends a favor and help them become aware of this as well. In high school, I was definitely seen in multiple situations as like a cock block or like a bitch because I was the one who pulled my friends aside and was like, I'm not sure if this is something that you want to be doing, especially if they're at a party and they're drinking, like their judgment is impaired. Be the person, be that friend who is willing to do that for your friends. That's the right thing to do. And if something does happen, you have a clear conscience and that you know you tried. I've never had a problem with looking like a bitch or, you know, someone like a cock block just because I know that I'm doing the right thing. The right thing that my gut is telling me to do and the thing that I would want someone, one of my friends to do for me. It might suck for like that night or the time where you're kind of pulling your friend aside. I can guarantee you that the guys, the guys friends who think you're a cock block, they won't matter. If they have that opinion of you, they're not people that you want to be associated with in the first place and they're not people who are going to matter in your life later. Like from my experience, the people who were like this in my life in high school have zero importance, zero impact in the world in my opinion, while I'm trying to be a good friend, a good person, and trying to do something, you know, with my life and trying to make an impact. Look out for your friends, tell them to look out for you, have like code words, develop a, a strategy, a game plan, and if you ever see a girl that you don't even know in a situation where it looks bad, reach out to her and ask her if she's okay or if she wants to hang out with you or go home. If everyone did this, the world would be so much more of a better place. So do me a favor and please like develop that system with your friends. I feel like I've been addressing this very much to girls. If there are any guys watching this video at this point 
I'm very impressed and I applaud you for, you know, just watching a video on this topic. So let me know if you are a guy watching this video and I feel like this is going to be probably the most controversial part of this video because I don't really know how to say this in like a super politically correct way. I'm just going to say it how I see it and if you want to fight me on it, like feel free. If a girl claims that you've sexually assaulted her or raped her 99% of the time, people are going to believe the girl. If she claims that you've like sexually assaulted her and you had nothing to do with her but you were with her the fault is like potentially 100% on you regardless of what really happened because no one was in the room with you guys no one knows except for you two or one of you or none of you if there was like alcohol involved it doesn't matter if it happened or not if you're accused of that that's gonna stain your reputation in some way shape or form and you never want to have that sort of reputation behind your name. Guys, be careful who you interact with, who you hook up with, who you're involved with, because you never know how they are. They might seem normal at first, based on a first impression. The worst type of person is a person who you think is cool at first, and then the more you get to know them, the more you hate them. There's so many people like that, though. Some girls are crazy, and I just want to look out for the guys out there who are perfectly good human beings. First of all, Obviously, be a good human being, but second of all, just be cautious because there are girls who would, you know, I don't know what their motives are, but they would rather stay in your reputation than theirs. Or they just have no idea and they are gonna blame you. I have no idea. That is probably the most controversial controversial topic that um, is in this video and I'm expecting to see some hate comments. So that is what this video is. I'm just trying to speak out and to let people know that they should take this topic seriously, they should be cautious, they should just have an awareness about this. And in my situation, it was not even anything related to college, so I don't really know how it shifted to that. But you can do something about it. And even if you can't at the time, um, you need to speak up and get help for it. My mom always tells me to ask for help because I'm pretty bad at that, but people do need to ask for help. That's why you have family and friends, so that they can help you and you can help them and you can feel safe. I'm like whispering at this point. So I'm gonna go now. I hope this video was helpful to one person. I'll try to like lighten the mood a little bit in my next video. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you later.